Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we have a project from one of our viewers. Now, we had talked about different projects and, and doing them on the show, your projects, and what we do is we predetermine if they're good for the show, meaning can we do them, can we film them, are they clean enough, are they doable? And in this particular case, we've got a 1954 Nash Healy head. And uh, this came in and uh, I unpackaged it as you see it right here. And there's a huge crack right here in this manifold. So first of all, I look at it and determine what material is it. Okay, so what I know uh, is that it is some type of aluminum. Well, for one reason, I scraped it. It's non-magnetic. And these, these heads, are they have a, a fairly soft scraping uh, view to them. So when I scraped it, it was soft. It didn't have magnetism. I looked at the metal. I actually took the, the broken pieces apart to take a look at them and see how clean or dirty they were. And they're already cleaned up, you know. So this crack right here is, uh, it's a big deal. Now the next question is how weldable is it? Uh, and some of these cast aluminums, you really don't know what it is. Uh, we take the, the philosophy that it's like an A356 casting or an A355 and you got about 75% aluminum and 25% junk. So hopefully uh, this one has some aluminum characteristics and we're going to show you how to prep this. We're going to do this in a couple of parts because it's going to take uh, quite some time to get done. Okay, along with this part came a note. Uh, again, this is a really neat looking casting, but it says, Wyatt, please find the enclosed cylinder head of a 1954 Nash Healy. Uh, you have been in contact with me via email. I've been doing most of the mechanical restoration for the car. Uh, please feel free to contact Robert or myself if you have any questions. This head has previously been at a repair facility in Iowa, and they deem it to be a very poor casting. Rob and I are both keeping our fingers crossed that you might be able to come up with a solution. Well, Chris, we are. We're, we're going to uh, we'll do a repair attempt on here. Uh, the only unknown is how dirty the casting is. Now you've provided me a very good clean casting uh, and I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to prep it, uh, show you how we would do it. Now one of the things that you're going to see me do is uh, I'm going to be doing a welding test long before I ever actually get on the part. And then the reason for that is when you start welding on the part, the part is typically dirty and nasty and, and you may think it's your machine, but it really is the casting. So I'm going to set up a flat plate. I'm going to set my cleaning action uh, on my machine long before I ever go ahead and weld on here. So then I'm going to tack it and I'm going to prep it and grind and show you a couple little tricks of the trade. So uh, let me get all my gear together and we'll get started. Okay, I got my uh, safety glasses on. I just got a, a little grinder here. I've got a couple of bits that I'm using on here. It's just hardened steel, but uh, take, take a look at this one. It's not a terribly aggressive wheel, but I need to grind in here and get some of the chips out, just get a little channel started. And then what I'm going to do is this, this is a severe cut right here. And what you'll find is that anytime you go into severe cuts, this will not load up where this one will. And when I say load up, it'll, uh, it'll get impregnated with soft aluminum and it just doesn't cut anymore. This one gets with the program. So just know you need both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the high risk areas of this thing. And uh, one is, is it weldable? Well, we're going to find that out in a few minutes. But as I prep it, I need to keep this surface flat. And it's flat right now. It's actually uh, finger tightened down. And I've, I've checked the, the gap. There's no gap in it right here whatsoever. So right now it's flat, but also where the manifold is going to match up. You've got to go ahead and take a straight edge. don't have to get too fancy with a straight edge. But put it up here. And I've got it lined up pretty good. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to tighten it. Okay, so it, it's not going anywhere. So right now, it seems to be in the perfect position. Now all I have to do is, is weld it and keep it flat, and that's always a task. So I'm going to take this little tab right here, and I'm, I'm going to grind down so I can get full penetration. I, I just want to focus in on this area and then on the back area, so at least I've got it all lined up. And then I'm going to grind a little channel in there. 
Uh, and once I get the channels where I want, then I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of the spot wells. And you know, at the time, I'm going to be able to tell how clean that material is. So let me go ahead and, uh, and get this started. Okay, well, in, in my grinding, uh, you probably noticed that I was grinding away from where I normally would weld. And the reason for that is there's an oxide layer on here. And this oxide layer is pretty tenacious. You know, it melts at about oh, anywhere from 34 to 3600 degrees Fahrenheit. So while I got the semi-smooth bit on here, I go ahead and remove that. And you can see it right where the weld and heat affected zone is going to be. Okay, so I was able to channel out a couple of areas. Uh, I'm getting ready to hit some pretty thick areas now, and I, I really want to channel it out pretty deep. So I'm going to go ahead and change to the aggressive wheel, and you can see the difference in the two. Okay, now I've got this, this weldment already ground out, not 100%, but where I really need to grind and put some tacks. So the first part of this is I've got everything lined up. I'm going to tack in strategic areas. Now, before I do that, I don't want to just tack well. I want my machine to be set up perfect because you're not going to be able to tell because of all the trash and all the oxides in this, you're not going to tell where you're at on your balance control. So I went ahead and I set my machine up. I'm, I'm in the sweet spot. I'm at about 70 to 73% uh, negative. And as long as you run a, a, a pass through an old piece of aluminum that's got some oxide on it, run a bead on it, take a look at it and see if it needs to be adjusted. So that's, that's pretty critical in all of this. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do this. Now remember, I'm going to be choosing a filler material. And for this particular application, I have a choice. One is I've got 4043, which is a very good uh, filler material. Properties aren't the greatest, but weldability is fantastic, meaning that you can use 4043 and you don't have crack, crack sensitivity problems. Now, the one that's got the best properties to it is 5356. And you would think, man, I'll be tempted to use 5356. But the reality is the, the one priority we have here is that will it crack? And being, uh, being a, a casting like this, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with 4043. So uh, anyway, here's my, here's my setup, my test bead, and let's see how, it, how it's running. Hey guys, this episode of Take Time is brought to you by Napotnik Welding Supplies. They're giving away this Aesop Rebel welding machine. For a chance to win this machine, join their email list by clicking this link. Now let's get back to welding. Okay, so I'm, I'm inspecting this weld and I was getting good cleaning action. I think I'm pretty well set, the balance that I need. So I'm getting good penetration, good, good cleaning. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this test piece away and go ahead and tack weld my part. Okay, when you, when you take a look at the mass of this aluminum, you know, the question comes up, do you have to preheat? And the answer is no, you don't. You, if you've got a big enough machine, enough amperage, you can just take off and go. But here's the reality. When you have this much mass, you pick up a little bit of moisture. You know, so I like to do a preheat even if it's 125, 130 degrees. And you don't have to have a big rosebud. You know, what I'm going to use is, is just a handheld heater. Um, like this right here. So I'm going to weld right here in this general area. So I'm going to go ahead and, and heat this thing up by hand. And you know, sometimes it takes a while, but you know, you can you can take a break and, and leave it sitting here and, and it'll heat up. I've I've got an infrared indicator and it's showing me that uh, that right now without the heat on there, this metal's running at about 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to take it up to about 125 just to take the shock off. You'd be surprised, you know, how you can eliminate cracks by doing that. So th this will take a while. Okay, so I've, I've preheated this. Uh, I'm at about 124 
you know, that's, that, that's close enough. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my machine on, get my gear on, and uh, go ahead and tack weld this thing. Okay, now my, my first tack is actually going to be a penetrating tack, so you can call it a weld, but I, I want to go to this flange right here. I've, I've V-grooved it out. Um, so let's see, see how clean it runs. Now, when, when welding a casting, don't get in any hurry because there's just so much crud coming out. And you can see it float to the top. But I'm, I'm adding alloy. Okay, I'm going to taper off gradually. So you can see I added alloy here, and you know it's going to hold it in position. Uh, I'm going to go all to the to the back side here, and I'm going to do the same thing. And and again, you can see all the crud coming out. So just let it start molting out, and you'll see it come to the surface. Okay, that's tack number two. So I've got it held in place. I keep inspecting. I've still got good flatness. I'm going to go pick out a couple of other areas here on top just to uh, just to tack weld, and then I'm going to come to the uh, the other side and put in a tack weld. That way, it's going to hold that flange in place. Okay, you can tell I was in kind of a ratty area. Again, a lot of oxides coming out, a lot of contaminants, and, uh, and that's normal. So you're going to see it, it's going to pop, but eventually when you start adding the filler, that filler starts cleaning it up. So you'll see a, a, little, a little shinier weld. Now, I'm going to reach from the backside and, and reach through and catch the crack in this hole. Now you're going to need probably anywhere from 150 to 225 amps, so uh, just make sure you got enough machine for, for this project. Um, and and I'm, I'm running most of the time right around 175, 180. I've, I've also, uh, I've, I've got this, um, this tungsten, this, uh, uh, it's called laser tungsten, it's got a green uh, color to it. And not a dark green, but it's got a chartreuse green. And I'm using that with my inverter, and uh, it seems to be holding up pretty good. 332 tungsten diameter. Uh, my filler is 332, uh, or 093, as you'll see some of the identification. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's filling up very nicely, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to move the part and make another tack. And once I do that, I'm, I'm going to take this piece off and, and check out the other side.
Okay, uh, now that concludes part one. So let's just recap what I did here. The, uh, the, the, the part that we're welding is an aluminum. It's a casting. Uh, we happen to know that Alcoa made it. It's uh, stamped right on here. So it's probably an A356 casting. Uh, so we know it's going to weld dirty. Decided to use 4043 filler instead of 5356. And so I've uh, ground this thing out put some significant tacks on here just to hold it in place and in part two we're going to go ahead and take this thing off the head and inspect the backside. So uh, thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.